this right here is the neighborhood that I'm from. It, it's a all black community or once was all like an all black community. And, and, and I sold uh, drugs for a very long time. And, and I used to flood the neighborhood with, 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 you know, Christmas giveaways, turkey giveaways, you know, just all these different giveaways. But I was kind of doing it wrong, wrong way. And I asked God, if you allow me to, to do this thing again, I'm gonna sling blocks a different way. And these are the real blocks. This is what the kids in the neighborhood need to see. They don't need to see the other blocks. We need people coming back to revitalize and rebuild our community with the right kind of blocks. I went to prison and I did 30.5 okay. months in the Department of Correction. Hey, right. Ex-felon just seems right. something that's doomed. It's like a cloud when you see ex-felon, but when you say returning citizens, it's like sunlight, it's daytime. It, 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 it's a different feeling, you know, hey. it's different energy. By being called a returning citizen, okay, yeah, I'm returning from a, a world that, you know, nobody want to be in, right? Back to a, a being a, a citizen. I brought all that. Okay. Yeah. I brought them one too. I got you. Yeah. So we get all that I don't say prison was a bad thing for me. I want to say prison was a bad thing with good results. Because while I was there, I was able to write a whole business plan. You know, build in my mind different things that I wanted to build when I got out. Hey, old time. Yes, sir. You got one second, please. My father uh, ended up opening the door for me. He went down and he signed his name on a, a, a Ryan lawnmower for me. He gave me a truck. He, he, he bought me a trailer. You seen what I was talking about out there? That was the start. I went to work. Cutting yards. Well, I'm cutting yards. It was hard. It was hard trying to cut yards and make money. Uh, then I began to get electrical jobs. So, with the mix, it was good. The next phase of what I wrote down, all this stuff was created from, from uh, wanting to open up a convenience store. That came to the horizon, that came to fruition. Was able to put my mom's vision, my mom's dream that I was able to connect to, uh, put her into place and call that Annie D's Food Mart. The idea would never came if it wasn't for this lady right here. Her name is Miss Annie. She's a wonderful, wonderful, phenomenal lady. Been in the, the school business over 34 years. She's just recently retired. Dee Dee has always been a, a driver, a, a go-getter. He had a hiccup, and that hiccup did not define him. He had the support of his family. He had his brothers. He had uh, the whole village standing behind him. We supported him and, and we ensured him that that is not the end of the world, you know? When you get out, we're gonna help you. We're gonna help you get on your feet. You know, and, and all these different things that I wrote down, including the barbecue stand that we just opened up, I wanted to call it Double D's BQ, but I, it, you know, it's not all about me. It's always was about other people. And that's what I'm all about, building a community. So that's why the name of my company is H&B Community Builders. Uh, H is, is, is stand for my last name is Hampton. Uh, that's uh, me and my brothers and fa my family. I, I, I brought them under this umbrella. And this B is another counterpart uh, of, of a family that don't look like me. A dad and a son named uh, David Barr and Travis Barr. We was able to do some different businesses on different things and, and I, and, and I gave him my vision on, on how I want to build a community. Davion was an electrical subcontractor for my son's business in Orlando. They became friends and, and Davion pulled him aside one day and said, we should do some other stuff together. And the first year we might have built three or four houses together. The next year we doubled what we were doing and the next year we doubled what we were doing again. I knew I wanted to be a home builder and, and so, you know, I'm building homes throughout the community. I mean, like, not just a home, I'm building nice homes, affordable homes that people can come back to the community and live in. My wife was 
friends with Davion's brother, and that's how I met Davion. I couldn't ask for anybody better to work for. I mean, I couldn't dream of even changing my job. Yeah, it's people like him that actually give other people that are convicted felons uh, uh, an outlook to look at. Well, hey, if he did it, I can do it. I started my march with Desmond Mead and, and the Florida Restoration of Rights Coalition. We're getting ready to go to Advocacy Day uh, next week, next week Thursday, I believe, we're going up to Tallahassee. I speak on all different type of platforms and different things, uh, talking about returning citizens and the rights to vote. In spite of, to this day, Davion Hampton still don't have the right to vote. So my name is Marquise McKenzie, and I am the statewide community liaison manager for Florida Rights Restoration Coalition. If you want to see any change in the community, um, it's by voting. And when you think about all the things, when somebody get in trouble, why is voting the first thing that they take away from them? Because it's powerful. Um, so it's, it's a powerful tool that if we must exercise, and if you ask me, that's a right that I don't think nobody should ever lose. What Amendment 4 is, it was an amendment that we was able to get passed. It can help returning citizens regain their voting rights. For 150 years in the state of Florida, individuals were banned from voting, right? You get a felony conviction, you lost your rights for life. Um, it wasn't over five or six or seven years, this was life. And one of the things that we see um, as an organization, when you uplift the ones at the very bottom, it creates safer communities for all of us. There was a loophole in there where we was able to go in and some of those fines and fees, we can get it modified or can get it reduced or waived to community service hours. So of course we went on with that fight, we continue to push, and just recently we was able to raise almost $24 million where we paid about 40,000 um, fines and fees for individuals across the state. And we continue to fight and push efforts with our fines and fees program to make sure that all the 1.4 million returning citizens have the opportunity to be a part of democracy. I had what they call uh, uh, an automatic fee just for the charge that I had of $52,500, not being selfish and, and it's not about me. Hey, instead of paying these $52,500 for me, which is one vote, go pay some for other people, which can be many, many, many votes. I feel as if this is something that shouldn't have never been done anyway. Poll taxes is what I call it. You know, this is something that I will continue to fight to the death of me. We're not far removed from slavery. That's why I stand toe and toe and hand in hand with Florida Restoration Rights Coalition because we're going to continue to fight the fight as long as the fight needed to be fought. I want to make it to where I don't have to pay a dime for something that I already deserve. That's my right from day one.